How are you doing, Jason? I'm doing really well. It's so great to see you. It's amazing. Just amazing what works nowadays. It's just mind blowing, you know? It is. I just, it's, I'm starting my 90th year now, and it's just mind blowing all the changes I've seen, you know? That's it. It's, it's incomprehensible. It really is. It's just, What are we doing today? Well, I, you know, I'm having so much fun teaching this this group. Are they MFT students? They're MFT students. They're first. Uh, they're in their first semester of the of the program, and uh, yeah, and they're they're reading your textbook. And there's probably not a week that goes by that I don't quote something you said to me or <laughs> or share some of the material that you've shared with That's me. That's very nice. Thank you. Did you whatever was useful to you? I'd be glad to have you know chat with you and. I just thought it would be really cool for them to be able to to hear from the author of their textbook and uh, you know, okay. I, I asked the, the question like what do you think I don't know what is your hope for maybe the next generation of, of therapists mm -hmm. yeah that was your question mm -hmm. oh god that's hard to say mm, the, the two the two pieces I sent you capture my hope, my, I think truth, truthfully, I think we're going to have more and more problems to solve. Okay, okay. because the, our society is getting much more complex. Okay, mm -hmm. the, the, the simpler we try to make our lives, the more so, more solutions we tend to look for and try to solve. That is the more problems we create. Okay, mm -hmm. See, and that's my that's my essence. It's not. I think we're going to always have problems because. Society makes sure we have. They said they have complicated rules for living in a society, mm -hmm. and it's very confusing. Just like every relationship in a society is its own little society. Okay, it has its own story and its own rules. Okay, mm -hmm. but this is a microcosm of the of a, of a family, for example. Every relationship in a family has its own story, and but it. Now we've got interfacing outside the family, and that's each member of the family interfacing with several other agencies, and that's its own story. So it's going to get more and more complex in that sense. You know, it's just an ex exponentially increasing, which means we're going to need more therapists. But at the same time, in the paper that I sent you, and this is where I think a big mistake in the education of therapists is where we don't teach them in our education that they are also a part of the problem. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's second order cybernetics, because you can't just observe the fact that you sit with us as a family. Now it's a different family because of your presence. Mm -hmm. and, and that's and that's 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 the important thing to remember. And your presence can be transformative or it can create more problems, depending on how you are with the family. It just depends, uh, it, it's, uh, the future generations will have to be prepared, but I, I hopefully they're prepared in realizing that they're also a part of the problem. And that, I gotta go back to that again. Uh, just like efforts at prevention, for example, it's, you can't, how do you prevent depression? You plant the concept. As soon as you say, I'm gonna to try to prevent depression. Mm -hmm. In other words, you create a self-awareness in people, okay? And a self-awareness of, am I depressed or not? If a person going into a prevention of self-depression, are they not already there? And also, I wish they would be aware that the metaphor of depression is just one, just a metaphor. Mm -hmm. it, it could be called other things, you know, uh, and I wish they would have that part of their education, but they're learning the DSM, mm -hmm. which they have to learn in order to practice, but they have the same sense that, what else might I call it? I could call depression discouragement. Mm -hmm. I could call it disenchantment. Mm -hmm. I could call it uh, debilitating. There are many other D's I could use. In fact, I wrote a paper, which I may have shared with you, I don't know, along that line. Mm -hmm. But um, the DSM is a social construction. And there was an important article by Amundsen and Stewart years ago called The Temptations of Power and Certainty. About nine, it was about 1995. But in it, 
he makes is this, he says, I don't treat what I diagnose. Okay. In other words, I diagnosed from the, so the client can be reimbursed, but that's not what I treat. Okay. And see, the, the, the fact is, it would be nice if therapists could say, I have to diagnose for practical purposes, but the, the, but the real diagnosis is not what's wrong, it's where they want to go. I sit with my clients and say, I can tell, we can spend a lot of time understanding what's wrong, but the more important thing for me is, how would you like your relationship to be? Let's get a visual, concrete image of that and see how we can go there. That to me is a, is a feed forward diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Like a feedback diagnosis. Does that make any sense? It, it, it makes perfect sense. And I, I think the more anxious or fearful the, the, the therapist might be about doing a good job, the more they are likely to, to want a, a, a standardized sort of approach to treating. Right. right. And I think and that's I think, something more. Yeah. And I think initially they need a, a, probably a standardized thing to get their legs good. Mm -hmm. But once they get their sea legs, metaphorically, mm -hmm. they can learn to be creative. Okay, yeah. it's, it's so much to learn, but they have to unlearn a lot to be able to be creative. Okay, mm -hmm. they got to keep it in the back of their heads. Well, I got this theory. I got this. This let's try this on for size. If it works, fine. But don't get seduced and thinking it's what the, what is really true. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. if it again working does not translate into being true. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. yeah, we've been having lots of discussions about which which models have research and outcome data. Uh, yeah. I've always yeah. been following it up with right. have more data doesn't mean that it's necessarily true. That makes sense. Yeah. It, makes perfect sense. Yeah. It, it, it reminded me one time I was I had a domestic violence case when I was in Louisiana, and I kept talking to you about people with these these kinds of people, these kinds of people, and you kept what on kind of challenging people? my calling them these kinds of people and it was helpful to get out of the mindset that right. i'm treating like they're all the same right uh, these kinds of cases we lose the uniqueness in that mm -hmm. we every family is unique and bowen's theory may fit this family it may be useful but we, we, we don't want to get seduced it's not a kind of family each family is just a unique culture just like each relationship in a family is unique and um, you, if, if you ask your students to look at every relationship in their own families of origin, and they say, yeah, we got a different story for each family member. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then you've got the triangles involved, mm -hmm. you know, which is Bowen and Mnuchin primarily. And those complicate the relationships. In other words, how you and I get along may depend on how we, we both get along with Peter, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know? And Peter may screw up our relationship by how he's with us, you know, and so on and so forth. But it's just those are there's a, those are wonderful ideas and suggested, but they're not. We can get seduced. You need to have the tools to begin therapy with, but oh, you can get seduced into believing you know what's true. Yes, okay. you have you, you have to live with a certain level of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. And that uncertainty will give you creativity. What, what, what would you say is the most important quality uh, of, a, of a therapist to be effective? Be secure, in, they must be secure enough in themselves to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Okay, to make themselves vulnerable enough to make their behavior a topic of conversation. Okay. By, by, by going meta communicating, meta convers inviting meta conversation, I'm I'm stuck here. I just made myself vulnerable. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not this omnipotent counselor. Okay. Mm -hmm. I make myself vulnerable by saying something's going on here, not sure what the hell it is. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. I've just opened myself up. They can look at me and say, Well, you're supposed to know. Yeah, I guess I am. I guess maybe I am, but I don't. So again, I have to open it up. But that it's it's the opening up that frees it. It may all of a sudden our stuckness may dissolve. Is it?
it's just magically, it's just by opening the conversation up. But if we, if I sit there saying, hmm, how am I going to deal with this family? Hmm, and doing it all in my head. Now I'm making it hard work and I'm taking too much responsibility. Okay. But if I, if I do what I'm doing in my head out loud, that changes the quim. Wait, I got to be careful here because I'm trying to tell myself a story about how I should try, try to help you. And I think instead of talking to myself about it, I think I should talk to you about it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just opens up the whole scenario and just frees up everything else. Just, and all of a sudden, it's like opening a window and the air comes in and the room is stagnant at this point, metaphorically. It's a particular thing, that's a medical model, basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Here's the family of uh, divorce, children are divorced, okay, and so on and so forth. Abusive families. We can get, they, they may have some uniquenesses, but there's also, just thinking systemically, there's certain relationship dynamics that play out there, okay, that transcends specific diagnoses, okay, diagnoses. Mm -hmm. But I just remember that one description, they're, they're symptom based, based. Mm -hmm. And that's where it gets, again, insurance companies are controlling because I can't, unless I use an evidence-based treatment, put, they, they can choose not to fund me. Mm -hmm. you know, but that does that hamstring me? Does it, it, it definitely limits me if I let it limit me, okay? But I can sit with the family and say, look, In order for you to be immersed, I got to diagnose one of you is having a problem. Okay, which one of you want, wants that? And also, I want you to know if you get this diagnosis, it's going to follow you for the rest of your life. Okay, how do you want to do this? <laughs> See, again, it's, that's a meta conversation I'm having with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You see, uh, there are many uh, dilemmas like that, and just, just the, the, the process of economics and Economics controls almost everything in our society, basically, right now. Okay. Whether or not it's, we decide, do we want this species to live? Well, how much is it going to cost us? You know, that kind of a question. That's, that, that's, not, that's not ecologically, that's writing a script for our own demise as, an, as, an, as species, you know. Yeah. That's yeah. my story. Just being stuck in therapy. There's no such thing as being stuck. You always can consult with your clients. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay to say, I'm stuck right now. <laughs> okay, I've kind of exhausted my repertoire of things. What's going on? What's happening here that somehow we're in this together? How can we evolve something that starts working? See, that may open it up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, oh, by, I call that meta communicating. You don't, you don't join them in trying to solve their financial problems or solve their in-law problems. That's, that's garbage. It's the process that's important. Um, someone in the MRI group says there are no impossible cases. There are no unsolvable cases. There are only uncreative therapists. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. And that to me is a very powerful statement. Mm -hmm. But to be able to transcend your theories, learn, they need to learn their theories and be able to work within a theory for a while, but if the damn theory is not working, they, they got to realize it's a theory. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's not, it's not, they can be seduced in thinking the way this, this theory describes the way this family really is, mm -hmm. but it's not true. Mm -hmm. It cannot be true. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a social construction. Satyrs is a social construction. Mnuchin's is a social construction. Uh, Bowen, they're all social constructed theories that fit our culture. But um, unfortunately, we try to impose those things in other cultures. Which okay. I, the book you right. sent me, the uh, uh, Crazy Like Us. Uh, like uh, Us, that's a wonderful story, yeah. Perfect, yeah. We're, we're, ex we're exporting the DSM to almost all the countries in the world, and they're bowing at the, at the, at the feet of our psychiatry. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also uh, more and more. I think we're going to have people seeking medications for their disorders. Okay. Mm -hmm. First of all, you have to, uh, my story is 
Disorder is not a disorder if you look at it in the context, okay? Mm -hmm. Listen to your client's story, but ask him, wonder how does this make sense in their advice? How did they end up at this point at this stage? There's your, there's your diagnosis. There's your, it's a story. You can't really know how it happened, but, but if you put it in context of their life history and put it in context of the current context, any, here's, the, here's the paradox. If I believe that in interaction with me, a therapist, an individual or a family can, be, can evolve or be different, then I have to believe at some level his existing relationships maintain him there. Mm -hmm. So we can't really do what any of these other people are doing. Mm -hmm. But it's important um, to talk about how they talk. Okay? That's the important skill any couple or any relationship should have, to be able to talk about how they're talking to each other. Not, not the content, not the money or the in-laws or whatever the issue is. That's, that's garbage. It's how they talk to each other. They can, if they learn to talk to each other well, they can transcend almost any concrete image. How about, uh, I don't know, we, we both uh, have worked now in the uh, Provo Orem area. Any, any thoughts? I no, well, the greatest challenge I had was when, when I spent a sabbatical at Brigham Young. I worked in their family therapy clinic for a while, okay? And I'm very open, I'm pretty liberal minded. And I was faced with couples coming in uh, with very, specific framework about how uh, coming out of the LDS religion mm -hmm. and how it should be, but it wasn't working for them. And how do I finesse that? How do I, how much latitude is there? Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and do they have to adhere strictly to this? You know, if, if the man is, is the, is the head of the family or whatever, that's how it was when I was there anyway. How do I get this woman to accept her role vis-a-vis? -vis, and is that my job? Mm -hmm. I mean, I had difficulty doing that. I had to work within the value parameters, mm -hmm. but yet I was thinking more broadly than that. Mm -hmm. But so the question is, how ethically do I work in a context? Can I work ethically in a context where it's asking me to do things that val that you know, that I can't I don't don't fit for me. Okay, okay for me. Um, I have a different vision of what a good relationship would look like. Mm -hmm. But in a certain context, and this is not just the LDS community, it could be a, a classical Mexican community where the man is still more dominant than that. And Chinese communities are very like that too. That's my understanding. I, I don't, I'm not positive about these things. Mm -hmm. But they're sitting with me there and they're each is presenting their story. How do I help them work? So they evolve something that works for both of them. As therapists, I think they need to be aware of themselves participating at this level, but they have another level observing themselves participating. Okay, that's where a classic paper by Orlin Jean said this. He said, "Have you ever noticed that one part of you does things and the other part of you watches?" Okay, it's the watching part of you that will have that. Will, that that helps you get creativity. I, I, I'm uh, projecting <laughs> on my students now uh, because I, I remember what it was like when I was a, in a more conservative Mormon space. And uh, my life has just taken so many different turns since then. I'm in a very different place um, in, my, in, my, in my thinking. But I, so it's like, I understand, I remember that reality, but I'm no longer in that reality. And I'm in a different one, so uh, it's it's very kind of I'm finding it stimulating and interesting right now. Mm -hmm. Working with these, right, right, right. yeah, right. It's, it's different. Well, one other thing too, I'll just let me share this with you. I don't know where I read this, but if you you're talking about religions, if you want to understand Christianity more study Buddhism or Taoism, study other religions, because mm -hmm. it always puts it in different perspective. Mm -hmm. 
you have to filter what you know about Christianity in a different set of filters. I love that, that. Just, that, 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 yeah, just like if you want to, you can talk about what it's like to be in a culture in Utah and or a Utah in that community. Mm -hmm. Visit other communities. Mm -hmm. You come back and you'll have a totally different perspective on it. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. going to a foreign country and trying to negotiate and saying to yourself, how do I be here? What are the rules here? How do I play this game here? Not not a tourist based, but in the streets of a culture. Mm -hmm. You will experience your own culture in a way that you've never have it before. Yep. That's how you can expand your, your perspective, you know. Definitely uh, my experience. It's been 30 years yeah. since I really lived in Utah. Yeah. And I've and yeah. I've babbled a bit. <laughs> so it's it's like yeah, yeah. New, yeah. in a new way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like living in the city. I go back to my little town in Iowa and say, wow, this is very different. Very, wow, what, you know, it, it, it's not, it's, it's not, not a radical change, but the time I spent in uh, Italy, for example, came back, it's a very different experience. Mm -hmm. I, I reentered and says, my God, this is pretty ugly, you know, by comparison, you know. Well, this is very different. I'm not sure how to negotiate this. It just, you have a different awareness of it. It's just, uh, see Mary Catherine Basin called that peripheral visions. What you look at is important, but what's going on the periphery of your experience is also enriches, enriches it's just, it's, That's a wonderful book called Peripheral Visions, by the way. I'm looking at it. Yeah, and also uh, a group book called Composing a Life. What a metaphor, composing a life. Mm -hmm. Sitting with a client saying, let's write some new music for your life. What kind of, you're playing a song in your family right now and it's kind of like a cacophony, like a symphony warming up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we could compose a different, get on a different melody here so we can harmonize a little bit. You know, so you can, you can draw on metaphors. Mm -hmm. And the metaphors you can draw on, if you listen to your clients well, you can pick up on metaphors that will work for them. Mm -hmm. If I got an accountant there, I might say to him very simply, I wonder how we can get a new balance sheet going here. Mm -hmm. You know? And they, 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 they can relate to a different. Yeah, you listen to your clients and they'll give you working metaphors okay, that you can draw upon. Or you can pull some randomly out of your experience. That's, that's why I think it's important they read poetry. They read good novels, not not airport novels, but good novels. Okay, it's just uh, rich, just rich, just like there's one sentence. I never forget. It's out of a novel I read years ago. He says, "I don't know myself well enough to write my autobiography." <laughs> you know, because I'm I'm at so many different selves. Yeah, you know, just in just so many ways. Thank you.